Hello folks, so I'm going to discuss with you a dream I had. And this was actually a pretty interesting dream, it was a pretty crazy dream. So yeah, um, let's get down right to it. So basically in this dream, I'm at some kind of school environment. I'm at some kind of school. I don't really know what kind of school it is at first. But uh, as the dream goes on later, it starts to become more apparent what kind of school it is. So, um, <clears throat> so it's a school environment, yeah. And I basically remember, the first thing I basically remember is being in some kind of cafeteria, eating lunch. And I noticed it's very cold outside. I can't remember exactly if it's snowing or not, but uh, it might have been slightly snowing. And if it wasn't slightly snowing, there was always snow on the ground. So, um, yeah, everyone's just chilling and eating and stuff like that, socializing, etc., etc. And um, as everything, everything, as everything's happening, there's a giant booming kind of sound with some trembling and a bit of bass to it. That's in terms. I'm not really great with sound yet in terms of a, in terms of like technical things um, for some instances. So I thought about it again. I thought the best way to describe it to people who don't, who are not familiar with the technical terms, because I might be getting some of it wrong, is to, um, the sound basically sounds a lot like when the T-Rex is coming towards the cars in Jurassic Park, the first one. There's that booming kind of sound, you know, like, you know, it's, if you watch, watch the uh, movie, watch the part with the T-Rexes, I mean, not the T-Rex, just the T-Rex, there's one T-Rex, and uh, when you hear the T-Rex come, you hear, you're hear you hearing this kind of like booming, kind of trembling sound, and uh, like it's, it's, at first it's very soft and it gets louder and louder and louder. The way I heard it was at its loudest, like in the movie when it's, when it's, when it's the loudest, when, it, when it's at the loudest stage, that's what I kept hearing time and time again. Um, so I hear that sound twice. The first time, some people stop, and then, but the second time, like, it was very ferocious, like, I might have even recalled the room vibrating. That's how bad it was. So, everyone just stopped, it was quiet, and then we all just, like, started getting up, or most of us started getting up, and, um, walk around, uh, go out of the cafeteria, we kind of walk through the hallways, just, just seeing what the heck's going on. And then uh, I know I look out the window. At one point, I look out the window, and I notice something. I notice these creatures outside. Um, they're beasts, basically. They're they're, they're they like they're like, they look like ferocious, shadowy, darkish, evilish, evilish beasts. Um, they really look like they're in the shape of bears. Like they were like in the shape of like, yeah, like in the shape of a bear, but it wasn't. It wasn't a bear, but it. I don't think it was. It wasn't a bear, but it was. It had the same shape and form as a bear, and it was also shadowy in the sense that it was giving. It was giving off a shadowy kind of vibe. So it wasn't like solid dark, or solid black. There was like shadows coming off it, and like uh, shadowy mists and fog coming off it, giving off this really darkish kind of vibe. And um, I kind of like. I kind of like noticed like what the heck is going on? Like what is that thing? Um, we're in the school, it's outside, so I'm assuming we're fine. And then all of a sudden, uh, you start hearing screaming noises, people begin to panic. Apparently, the creatures got inside the building. And, um, this is the point where I kind of start to realize what kind of school I'm in. I'm in a military school. I'm in a military academy kind of school. Because now, there's students coming out with rifles. Um, M1 Garands and Lee Enfields. They, I mean, I'm not sure which kind of rifles they were. They looked like they were Lee Enfields or M1 Garands. Um, so yeah, bulls are being fired. It's all going crazy. I even remember having a rifle in my hand at one point. Um, I don't know when it happened. I just kind of remember having one at one point. I start, like, running as well. And um, the best thing that you seem to be doing in order to survive was to stay out of the main areas of the building, or the complex. So the main hallways, cafeteria, the classrooms, some of the faculty offices, just stay away from those areas. Go to the secondary areas, like staircases, the smaller, more harder rooms to get to, the secret rooms, the like rooms in the basement. Uh, go through the ducts in the vents, in the, through the, through the, de through the, through the different um, vents, 
throughout the, throughout the built complex. Um, I remember surviving. Yeah, I remember surviving. And um, I recall shooting some of these creatures, these beasts. Um, again, like in the, in the in the form or shape of bears. And um, I remember being able to get outside. I remember that as well. Um, we got. I was outside, not just by myself, but I was with a group of people, and we were shooting the bear, the, not the bears. We were shooting the creatures, and we were, we were we were having success taking them down. And um, the next big surprise that comes is um, just out of nowhere, um, troops from the Soviet Union. I'm not. I'm not kidding. The Soviet Union. Um, the Soviet Union. Yeah. They, we, we, we come across them. They're fighting the same creatures. They all literally have PPSH 41s. Um, they have PPSHs, um, and they're 41s in particular. If you, know any, if you don't know what these guns look like, Google it. Type in, open, up a new, open up a new tab and Google it. Um, a PPSH is, basically, PPSH is basically a submachine gun. I think it's a submachine gun. I might be wrong, but it's a, it's a pretty badass gun. And, um, Okay, so here's the here's another interesting part to this whole story, and that is, um, it repeats itself three times. Repeats itself three times, and um, at least two uh, two of those times, there's more information revealed. The second time, um, didn't really reveal much. It kind of felt like the same thing, um, and the best way to describe how this all happened was like. Watching the Edge of uh, not Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise in it, um, it happened in the same sense that like he started off at some certain point in the time. Same did I. Each time it it re it reversed itself. It happened before the trembling sound, and um, yeah, so it happened before the trembling sound. Unlike the Edge of Tomorrow, it did not, it did not exactly start in the same place or the same time. It would start. In a different location at a different time, so um, um, the second time is a lot harder to remember. From the second time, I remember basically it felt like a lot of the same things were happening. Nothing really new was happening. It was in like the Russian thing, not the Russian thing, the Soviet Union thing. Um, I can't remember if that was happening in, in version one or version two, but the one thing I did significantly significantly remember was how I was back in the cafeteria at the very beginning, and I hear that trembling sound again. I'm like, wait a minute, this is all, this is happening again. Like, I, I know what's going on now. Like, that was, the, that was the thing about the second time that I was more accustomed to. I was sitting there in the cafeteria again, and that sound happens again. And it does, and it happens for the second time. I just rush right up. I know what the, I know what's gonna happen. Like, like, just like Edge of Tomorrow, like Tom Cruise is aware of what's gonna happen. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. Um, the third time was the most was it was had more inter information, more detail. In the third time, um, I don't start off in the cafeteria or heading towards the cafeteria. Instead, I'm in a different area of the build of the complex. I happen to stumble across a meeting happening, and this is where the Soviet Union comes into play because this is a this is an American military academy or military installation. And they're having a, a meeting with Soviet officials or Soviet ambassadors or Soviet military leaders. I'm trying to remember exactly what details happened. Um, what I do remember, the mo what I do rem I'm not sure if this happened or not, but there was an, I think they might have been watching Looney, Tune Looney Tunes cartoons at one point. Um, they might have been discussing some like business, military business related stuff. But the one thing that was significant was one of the Soviet guys was mocking the U.S like faculty or the US leaders for having blimps. He's like no one's no one's using blimps anymore. You guys are idiots. You guys are stupid. And then like he opens up a uh he opens up the window in the office area and you actually see a blimp there. You see a blimp coming out of like a hangar. And he's like and he points to me he's like, "See, you idiots and stuff like that. You idiots are using blimps still. Our rockets or whatever can take out these blimps. These are these, you guys are idiots and stuff like that." Although the funny thing at this point is that no one is using blimps for military purpose. The only use blimps were only used during World War One, as far as I can remember, and uh, after World War One, no one ever used blimps again for any kind of military service. So yeah, um, 
I'm not really sure. I mean, dreams are weird like this. Um, it was definitely a 19. It was definitely 1950s vibe. It was either late 40s or early 50s vibe to it, because I know, especially because of the weapons, because of what was going on with the Soviet Union in America, because the Soviet Union was there. So it definitely gave off a 19 late early early 50s late 40s vibe. So basically. All that happens. I got in trouble apparently because I might have screwed up one of the vinyl records or one of the vinyl pieces or one of the film prints. Some I'm gonna screw up one of the things that creates the music or creates the projection projection for one of the Looney Tunes cartoons. I can't remember exactly exactly how I did it or what exactly happened, or even if I did it at all or if it was fine. But I was dis but I was dismissed. Okay, so, and now this is how the story become, becomes more familiar again. I start walking, and I walk, and I walk, and I get into the cafeteria, and I realize at this point that, wait a minute, I'm back in the same area again as it was two times before. So, instead of going back to my seat, I just stood at the, at the area where you enter, and there, there's like a staircase going down to the main area. So, I just stood over on that, pl on that, on that, on that area, and, um... Yeah, so I just stood there for a few seconds, and then that booming sound came back. And I'm like, okay, time to get the fuck going right now. Go, go, go. I did not even hesitate. I was like, go, go. Also, some of the other students, they seemed to be having the same experience because they were also reacting to the same situation. They were reacting a lot faster as well. So it could have been that I not only was I experiencing this situation it, multiple times, but it could have also been that other students are experiencing the situation multiple times. So the beasts come back. There's fighting again. The fighting is more, more of, a, more of, a, more of a resistance being put up by the students, but the beasts are still pretty freaking strong. Um, we, me, and a few others go into an, and go into a vent duck, and um, like these, the vent, the ventilate, the ventilation system, and uh, we're wondering if those beasts are near us. So one of the people starts acting like an idiot and starts actually yelling out like sounds or words like hello, hello, and like someone punches him or slaps him in the face and tells him to shut up and stuff like that. So yeah, good idea because you know what the fu what the fuck was that kid thinking? And like, like you want to die or something? Seriously. So we get outside again for the last time, and this time it's different. Um, the two previous times were different environments. This was again a, another different environment. This was more uh, like a roadway, and um, there was like gates and everything, and uh, and and we saw the Soviet soldiers more clearly now, and um, they had their PBSHs out, and they were fighting and killing the beasts, and uh, there was this gate again, and they were trying to attempt to close the gate, and now a new a group of beasts come or creatures come this time they're white and they look like polar bears but they're not polar bears they look like polar bears and they look kind of animated too as in they give off like a cartoonish kind of animation kind of like vibe for some reason so yeah um there's a whole horde of them coming and uh, they're trying to close the gates and a whole bunch of them got through the gate and um i was standing very close to the gate i was on the roadway that was leading the gate but all the polar bear creatures, and they're not polar bears, but they're polar bear-like creatures, passed me by. And um, all I remember next is that uh, I'm, I'm like walking away from the, from the area, or I'm running away from the area, and I look behind me, and I see a bunch of the Soviet soldiers, um, like, you know, shooting them and stuff like that. And there's a lot of firefights going on and stuff like that. And... Uh, it was kind of evenly matched. I mean, like they were the bears, not the bears. The beasts were putting up a good fight, and so were the Soviet soldiers. But it wasn't like they were like the Soviet soldiers were not like over over killing them. There was actually some kind of like resistance going on. There was like equally matched. So yeah, and then I woke up and I was like, well, that was an interesting dream. So yeah, that's all I can think of right now. If I do have any more information, I'll put in annotations, but. That's all I could basically remember, or the most of it. So yeah, um, thanks for watching, people.